Welcome back to the Up20 Podcast. I'm your host, Coach Karan Godwin, owner of BallHogGloves.com. I have my guy here, Coach Brian Inge. How you doing today? I'm good, man. I'm doing well. Been busy, like, like we all have, but busy is good. Busy is good. Definitely back. Great to be back in the saddle with you. So looking forward there, to it. There you go. There you go. Coach Inge is owner of Hoopanati.com. Um, as we always started off, um, Bible verse and also something for the coaches. So Proverbs 29, 18, where there's no vision, the people perish. And that's very important because God is saying that if you don't have a plan for your life, someone else does. You know, we, yeah. we, we hear that a lot. I mean, you can't walk around aimlessly. In this episode, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about our uh, weekend. We're going to talk about the recruiting plans and all that. And also, um, you know, for the culture, um, Nipsey Hussle, in one of his songs, he said uh, he accomplished everything that he wanted and he had to sit back and read rearrange that list so I think that some people um sometimes feel like that like the NBA is the top right when really you know most players don't even last that long if you do make it and that's like the beginning of your life so there comes a time when you accomplish goals and everything's a goal and you have to rearrange your list man so what what do you have for me B? I think one this one's probably more um in line with something that I, I I it's close to me, uh, something, you know, I, I struggle sometimes with being anxious and, and thinking too much. Like I'm a plan, like you just spoke about the your verse with, with planning and things like the being prepared. I I plan and stuff like that. And it kind of gets me like anxious. Like, oh, did I do this, did I do that? Let me mm-hmm. double check this. So my verse is Philippians chapter four, verses six and seven. And it says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, Will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And this is uh, very close to me. I wish I would have brought it up sooner, but I think it's kind of more relevant as I'm um, in event week, um, which we will get into. I have an event coming up. Um, with that, you can be very, very stressful organizing things. You got a lot going on and just having to plan with God and knowing that believing in yourself, believing in your plan and, and try to put faith and put your understanding yeah. in God will you know, alleviate some of those issues because it's already been written. No, yeah, well, well, let's well, well, let's talk about that. Let's go right to it. I mean, you talk about event planning. Obviously, this is something that that you're doing with your consulting firm. Um, I came right out of college. One of my first jobs was a athletic director at the YMCA, and they gave me a basketball league. Obviously, you know, you have soccer, you have basketball, you got to do all the leagues in right. the YMCA. But they gave me a basketball league with 80 teams, and I was like, whoa, you know. That's gyms everywhere, referees. I mean, that's event planning, like, you know, 201, 301, you know, with 80 teams and you just coming out of college trying to figure everything out. So so, so right. tell me, uh, what does it take to actually get into that field for those um, college kids, or even people that they want to get involved in event planning so as pertain to basketball and beyond? I think for me, uh, like when I first got out of school, I kind of just jumped right into it. Um, the first thing I, I did, which a lot of us do, is we jump into training because we love the game. We love being on the court. That's what we know. That's what we're comfortable with. So I did that. And um, I just, I saw, like, I want to do more than this. Uh, even even though like, I love being on the court, I, I immediately knew I want to do more than just train basketball players. So I said, I'm, I can throw events. So I, I literally just had an idea to do a spring basketball league and went with it. Uh, I was literally running in schools, trying to drag down coaches, get them to, get them to participate. Uh, Marty can tell you the story. This is before I even went to coaching at McNamara. I'm running up in McNamara, going to classrooms, like, yo, coach, y'all going to play? What, what's going on? You know, did the same thing with several coaches just to make it work. So very modest league, uh, six teams. But I just did it. I, um, it, w- it wasn't smooth the first time around. I didn't really know what I was doing. But um, through trial and error, I was able to get really good at it. And then I moved on to DMV Elite. And now I'm over at the St. James and um, starting my own consulting firm to, to work with other groups and do great things. So I guess uh, for me, it, I just had a plan, an idea, and I was naive. And so then I used that to my advantage. Thing, I could do anything. And yeah. I just went out and did it. Yep. So how, how did it go this weekend? Oh, well, it's coming up. So my, my first event of the year, uh, right. it's the DMV Spring Warm Up. So I've probably, I got 61 teams. Uh, from as far as Delaware all the way down to the Richmond area. Uh, I've got some of the top uh, shoot teams, top independent teams uh, in the in the event. So it's going to be really good. It's, it's one of my favorite events that I put on every year. Uh, due to COVID, I wasn't able to do it like last year. But um, like the last time I did, I had 120 teams. Nice. Um, this time I had, had to scale down a little bit just because like I'm, I'm with a new group, new organization, things like that. But same product, um, 
I'm looking looking forward to it. It'll be Friday night at the St. James, all four ports bustling. So get there early. Uh, pre the pre sale tickets are available. Uh, you can reach out to myself or go to my any of my social media handles to get that information. And um, Saturday and Sunday we will be at the newly named Alexandria City High School, formerly known as TC Williams. It's a beautiful facility. Uh, nice. it's, 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 it's really nice. I'm looking forward to the event. Uh, it's it's going to be really great. Good. And speaking of events, I had a busy weekend with my boys, obviously, they're in AAU now, um, first grade and fourth grade. So uh, my first grader, he actually, they don't, you know, AAU starts in second grade. So he gets the opportunity to kind of play up and kind of get the feel of things. Uh, he gets out there when he can, you know, play some defense, uh, mm -hmm. check some shots. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then my, my fourth grader, he, he's, he's in full swing now, you know, AAU mode his first year. So he, he's doing pretty well. Um, both of my boys have my shooting touch that, that I'm happy about, but it gives me, you know, they give me the opportunity to see what we have to work on in the off season. And um, it's um, we went to Spooky Nook, which is the largest facility in the United States of America, over 34 courts. They got baseball, basketball, they have everything in there, arcades. I mean, it was just crazy. And one of the things about it is it's a very intense environment because each court, if you don't win Saturday, you have to play the early game Sunday. A lot of people don't know that. So mm -hmm. if, you, if you lose your first two games, you're going to be playing 730 in the morning on yep. Sunday and you're out of there. And as you know, at AAU, you kind of want to hang out that Saturday night. It's, it's, it's the time for your, your organization to bond. You know, parents are out in the lobby, kids are running around and having to wake up at five o'clock the next day is not what you want to do. So awesome experience. Absolutely. You know, we, we made the final four, man. We we um we went three and one, I believe. And um, the, the boys just just played very very well, so I, I can't be more pleased. Um, to just get into it, man. Um, you know we talked about the Bible verse. You know people perish from lack of knowledge, and um, I know we want to talk about recruiting today. So, what, what's your take on, on today's state of, of recruiting as it pertains to the transfer portal, the, the the way that recruiting has changed over the last I say since COVID. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's, it's it's tough, um, especially when you like you see a lot of kids not struggling, but waiting for scholarship offers. And you got the kids in the portal with the college guys already in the portal waiting for their next move. And you got the coaches who are either getting fired or taking new jobs. So the schools are waiting for their new programs to even reboot. So and then you got COVID on top of that. So recruiting is kind of in this weird pattern where you don't really know what the norm is yet because you got so many varying factors that are had that been introduced. So. I told people right now, like, I think things are starting to level out, but even now I'm not too sure. So if you look at the DMV uh, recruiting uh, for the last several years and uh, my guy, Marcus Helton, who's still with DMV Elite, he does a good job of putting all those stats and, and the data points together. Last year, which was a COVID year, I think, well, I can't say it was the end of COVID, but, you know, uh, last COVID year, there were 252 local DMV Division One uh, prospects, which is, okay, this year, there's only 52. Wow. Only 52. So almost 200 less. And we, this is the DMV. We've got talented players. And yes. it, 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 I, I really thought we should talk about this because I, I'm helping some, some young men trying to find yeah. their path through the process. I've got a events coming up, uh, my, my AU event. Then I the following week, I have an unsigned event, which kind of was spurned by this need to help guys get, get offers and, and looks. But things are crazy. Um, I think right now, like since things aren't so concrete, uh, some, some advice I've been giving, giving young uh, student athletes is if, if someone is interested in you and they're showing true interest, not saying just, oh, you got an offer and they don't talk to you, but someone who's like right. actively recruiting you, actively getting to know you, you know, expressing true interest, you yeah. may want to take it because yeah. things are so so helter-skelter from the grassroots level all the way up until to college ranks. So you just don't know, it, it, there's not a true a true path right now. Maybe within yeah. the next 12, 18 months, things will kind of start to stabilize like the stock market yeah. does. Yeah. But, you know, things are just so up and down right now that it's just tough for the kids. Well, well, well let's talk about um, the reason why and kind of break it down for the audience. Um, oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Woo. Nice, sir. Yeah, I just need. So let's break it down for the audience. Um, The reason why we're in this situation is because they changed the transfer rule. So... Not only did you have COVID, which gave everyone another year, right? Yep. 
That's um, one. I, yeah, I, I remember that year because a lot of the seniors of that year, oh man, they, they were hurt. A lot of them had to go to prep school. Some were looking at junior colleges. Um, as you know, I'm always scholarship hunting and trying to get guys scholarships. That, that's kind of what I do for, for our community and beyond. And I would talk to college coaches all the time. And, and a lot of them would say, hey, Coach Godwin, man, um, you know, usually I call them. They want to know more about the prospect. But a lot of them would say, hey, we're not even looking at high school guys. He said, we're only looking at transfer portal because colleges um, want older guys and mm -hmm. more experienced guys. And if you've been through the college process, you understand what you're getting into. It's a huge leap from high school to college. I mean, it's like almost night and day, especially depending yep. on what school you come from obviously the wcac high private league you know you close that gap a little bit but it's still a huge huge um gap and now you have the COVID people get an extra year so people are playing six years now i mean some people read years. Third, got another yeah um now you have uh, you and i we, we know kids that are in the third year still freshmen you know yeah, yeah. so so like with that there's been a backlog and you really have to prepare yourself, um, knowing people like yourself, going to the events, you have to have video. Uh, a lot of the coaches, even during COVID, I mean, the high school games were sp sporadic. They, they didn't get to see a whole class of guys. Um, mm -hmm. They always have um, what's called synergy. So each college program, for those who don't know, they have something called synergy. And synergy will have all division one, all division two, all junior college, and some of the shoe companies that have, you know, the Under Armour, the UIBL, and they well, can kind of check, you know, people's yep. form and stats. Like, you know, I mean, it goes that detail does, and every time they went right, pick and roll screens, like they can literally break down your game. The disadvantage of the high school kid is most of them don't have that. And I think that we're already at a disadvantage because most college coaches are worried about their job. They can't even get out during the high school time, you know? Now, yeah. So my one of my recommendations to the NCAA is um, to give each team at least, you know, three high school dedicated scouts because, you know, the NBA has scouts, you know, they get the opportunity to go out there and they're not particularly on the bench. Their job is to scout talent so they can put together packages and, and um, bring together guys that that'll be, you know, good for the program. So um, what are your other um, um, any any other advice for, for these kids? As far as I'm um, getting exposure, uh, I, I think what you said is spot on. Being able to have film readily available is, is, is key. Um, I think with a lot of platforms, like you, you got Bowler TV, uh, the Commonwealth Basketball Group, who is from the live stream my event, they have some platforms where you can, well, college coaches can go and watch the film and watch it after the event, stuff like that. And, and you play enough events, you, you you build a resume, you build a data profile, right? So, um, so that's one thing. Make sure you have that film. Make sure you have your data points. Um, have have your basketball bio ready or in a portfolio or uh, digital style that always helps. Um, also, really, just I mean, if you, like I said, if you have an opportunity, yeah, you you have even, coach, even if like an, an AU coach or somebody like that who who wants to give an opportunity to put you on a platform and they really like you, go for it. Like a lot of a lot of programs, excuse me, a lot of uh, kids they want to play for like the shoe teams. And we've got, we're in the DMV, we're lucky enough to have some great shoe programs and the guys do a great job. But the, the reality is that everyone can't play on a shoe team and not right. everyone on the shoe team actually gets division one scholarships. So the, the key thing here is to go where you're going to be able to get on the floor and produce and, and show what you can do. There are a ton of great independent programs in this area that you can also get a college scholarship. Like I said, last year we had 252 division one scholarships. There are 250 players that are playing on shoe teams. So just find the right, find the right fit and you'll be okay. Um, one, one thing I was going to, one point I was going to make about something you had said about what, what colleges should do for the high school students. And I, I, I was thinking about this. So I love the one and done rule. I think kids should actually be able to go straight out of high school. Um, we've got the G league overtime. League, league, we've got things like that. My suggestion, and I haven't done much statistics or much uh, research into it, just something that I think might could benefit the colleges, but, but could also benefit the players. I think players should have the opportunity to go pro out of high school. And if, if you're good enough, great. Um, if you're not, and you just decide to go to college, I think you should be, you should, I think you should be, you have, you have the ability to leave after one year, but if you leave after one year, you have to sit out. Now, if you stay two years, you should be able to play immediately if you transfer. So I think that'll kind of give college coaches some some sense of stability to plan out more than just. So 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 you're saying that if you leave after one year, you should sit out like like it used to, the rule used to like be. you used to. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that too. Because a lot of players, especially ones that have, are ambitious, they want to go to the league. They don't want to sit out that one year. You know, exactly. now they can just hop up and you know you yell at a kid and it's it's over. <laughs> right. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. I definitely get that. And, and more to your point, um, we have to kind of define what interest is. Um, you know, a lot of kids get offers. You see a lot Very of things cool. on Twitter, right? But the official offer is usually that visit. There's yeah. an official visit. You know, when you have the official visit, that's the time that most guys can take advantage of that scholarship. Obviously, if you're one of the top players in the country, you say yes, and, and co- you know, programs are going to run with it. But usually, um, what I've seen in the past is college coaches will stagger their official visits and based on, you know, obviously who they want. And when you get there, um, that's why I say it. so when you if you have any interest at all uh, from a college, I would say go ahead and make sure you you drive yep. down to that institution. Um, you want to get on campus. You want to get in a space where you can understand um, each program, what you're looking for before the pressure comes on. Because, as you know, mm-hmm. if you if you go on an official visit, you know, there's someone coming a week behind you that next Saturday. And what they're going to tell you is if. And we love you. We love to have you. But we got so and so point guard mm-hmm. number two coming. And if you don't take this now, he may take it. So that puts you in the bind. And that's why most people, even though that you get five official visits, most people only take one sometimes two, because the pressure's on. And if you like it, it's like, hey, you know, so make sure you get those unofficials out early. And um, the other thing is you may have to take, you may not want to play division two, you may not want to play low division one, but because of the way it is now, it's become like a farm system where you can transfer right away. I mean, you can go to a division two or a low division one, do your thing, average 20, and then they have the opportunity to move up, mm-hmm. you know? I mean, it just is what it is. I mean, the transfer portal is gonna trump. The guy's transferring from Indiana, Kentucky, and, you know, he got some playing time and they understand, you know, he may be ahead of you, you know? It just mm-hmm. is what it is, you know, so. A lot of these college coaches kind of just plug gaps until they're just trying to keep their jobs. You know what I'm saying? Yes. They're plugging gaps, they can get the big fish they want. So if you see it in one recruiting year, like ah, I kind of need a swing man just for this year. Next year we're gonna reboot anyway. I just need I just need somebody right now. Boom, I'm going to portal, get somebody, he can rebound, defend, might hit an open shot. He I know he's good for at least 15 minutes a game. That's all I need. Boom, I'm going with that. Yeah. Short bet. Yeah, and and that's and that's what it is, man. So um a recap of uh this incoming Final Four, man, I'm extremely excited. Yes. Um, recap of the tournament has been unbelievable. Um, one of my old uh, AU program teammates, Shaheem Holloway, Coach Shaheem Holloway, Seton, Seton Hall, nice. Brad, right now at St. Peter's, uh, was able to bring them to the Elite Eight, man. It's such a proud moment because I, I know a lot of people um, don't understand this, but when, when, you're, when we're working out and we have our team workouts and, you know, we have these players in the gym and we have all these college coaches coming in in their sweatsuits, um, a lot of people don't realize that these guys are millionaires. You know? <laughs> right. Like, they'll say, we're so programmed to think that a millionaire always has a suit on, but these guys are in the same sweats that we were in with their team logo on it, making millions of dollars. And now Shaheen Holloway is um, in discussion with Seton Hall, his, his alma mater, somewhere that he went, he brought him to the Sweet 16 about um, 20 years ago or so. And now he's he's primed to make 25 million plus guaranteed. Yeah, guaranteed. And that's, uh, you know, to have a quarter of a hundred million dollars in talks is is this unbelievable generational wealth, man. So a lot of well, kids out there. Yeah. Okay. He's one of the guys that really helps the kids. So you're getting paid $25 million to help some kids, draw some X and O's, you know, and yell at some officials. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's a beautiful thing. And uh, also it, it goes to loyalty, too. I mean, you figure he's given like 17 years of his life to see all, you know, so being able to go back there and his daughter graduated from there. Uh, he's a Jersey legend, originally from Queens, um, a guy that just changed. He changed totally the area of where we come from, man. Like he just came there as a freshman to St. Pat's and he just tore it up and it, it was never the same since. So for him to, to, be, uh, to get all that back, you know, especially yep. in, in a monetary value, man, I just uh, pray that, you know, his contract goes well and, and he does some amazing things at Seton Hall, um, you know, provided he, he chooses to go there. Um, who, who else did you like during the tournament? Man, it doesn't matter who I like because First day, I had to rip it up. Once Kentucky lost, it was done. And then Auburn got smacked. 
like I had Auburn winning it all. Like we we spoke in a previous uh, episode that how much I really loved Auburn. I was really fond of what they were doing there. Man, I think, I think it was Miami. Miami ran through them so bad. It was crazy. Right. But I've enjoyed the tournament. Like this is, you know, my favorite, favorite time of the year. I'm sure you're you're very fond of this time or any basketball a minded individual. Or not even basketball. People love March Madness. I, yes. I believe it's one of those times of year where you can kind of really unify everyone and everyone's kind of focus on the same thing. So I, I love it. Um, my bracket is trash. Yeah, I already know. But, what, but what's your take on the state of the game? Because I, I this year, watching St. Peter's play, beating a number two Kentucky, Final Four hopeful, a 31 win uh, Murray State team that was unbelievable, and a Purdue team that's a Final Four hopeful with a 74 yeah. guy. And, you know, that's like the, the gap has has closed a lot especially with the guards. I mean, I think, those, those St. Peter's guards, Banks and, and the other kid, I mean, you, you couldn't you couldn't tell the difference. It's not like you looked at them and say, okay, this is a low major team playing a high major team. They were cool, calm, collective, ran their stuff, played defense, top 20 defense. You had a 6'7 guy leading the nation in blocks, going up against 7'4", seven, 7'4". Seven right. Like, so what's your take on the state of basketball? Is it the skill training that, that's, that's kind of, um, you know, um, lowering this gap? I mean, what, what's going on? Because I, I couldn't tell the difference up there. Exactly right. And I, I think you're, you're spot on. I think for one, uh, like Coach Holloway, he does a great for a few things. For one, you got a coach who understands his, his team. He understands his players. They actually buy into him and he supports them. He feeds into them. Right. Two, they've, they've got some kids that are older who've been around the program. They know what he wants. They know what he expects. They trust him. He trusts them. And he's got some young kids who are pretty good, play some high-level basketball, against some high-level competition in high school. And I'm thinking, I'm, I'm talking about the kid, Juju Murray, who's, who's really good, maybe a little undersized to go high major. But, you know, you, you, got, you lace them up with any of the high major players, you can't really tell because he grew up playing against them. And same with a lot of these St. Peter's guards. So, the, the, like you said, the skill level – I think it's improved. I think the transfer portal and everything, it, it gives, well, let me, let me backtrack. The NCAA at this point, it gives the advantage to the older teams, you yeah. know, and you got somebody like St. Peter's, you got an older team, you yeah. got a coach um, who, who's in sync with his players 100%, and you you have that perfect mix. And I think that's why they're able to kind of beat through. Like they beat Purdue. Jaden Ivey is going to be a top five pick. Zach, yes. He's a seven footer. He's going to be a, a NBA player. And then the big man, I'm, I'm, I don't know you know because you watch basketball, Ted Williams. Williams. He was there. He was the All American last yes. year. Yes. Uh. He's a pro. So it's like St. Peter's knocked off that team with three pros and they, they you know, they beat Kentucky. And I mean, yes. I, I had, I, I picked Kentucky to win, but I, I knew it was going to be a challenge just because Kentucky has the young guys and what yeah. young guys, young guys do. And, 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 and everybody, you saw the NCAA kind of set up. Kentucky versus Murray State, you know, that that rival. Because they probably never played each other during the year. So it's kind of like a couple of years ago when uh, Wichita State played Kansas, you know. It's one of those little, little brother matchups, like, and I think Wichita State won. But um, no, no, to your point, man, it's, it was an amazing tournament. Um, St. Peter's is number one. My number one moment of all time, I would say St. Peter's, um, George Mason's Final Four run, um, UNB. UNBC beating um, Virginia was probably one of my favorite moments. I mean, that was just, just crazy. And like you said, um, that BCU run was um, was awesome as well. Um, but St. Peter's is definitely up there, man. And I know I'm being a homer, but um, I just um, I like when 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 the hard work pays off. And you get to see that, you know. Yep, definitely, definitely, definitely. definitely. I love to see the little guys uh, battle the big guys and, and win, you know, and win, yeah. and even the playing field playing field like that's why I, i'm i'm hesitant to say i'm against the transfer portal because i like what it's doing for the little guys in some ways like with the ones that actually make it to the tournament yeah. but I, I can see how it kind of is a detriment as well so it's like you got yeah the, it's the high school kids man i you know I, I love the high school kids i want them to get the opportunity and the guys that are already in the system they had to sit out a year it really didn't hurt that much man they got to be more mature they got an extra year <laughs> of um school too i mean you got the opportunity to work on your master's you know, so yeah, that's it's like another. That's key. That's, yeah, that's key. man, that, that extra year of school got a lot of guys in master's degree. So that's uh, I would love to see that rule come back, you know, sit out one year. I think it was beneficial. Um, but yeah, man, great show today, B. Doc. I know you and I have been talking for a minute. We've both been busy trying, trying to get everything together. But um, good to come on here and, and talk hoops, you know, talk, you know, God, basketball, business. And um, Absolutely. It's, it's March Madness time. So. 
All right, guys. As always, God first work until we will see you guys after the final four. Oh, who's your pick, man? You know I'm going with Duke, Coach K. We got one, one, we got one, one for the Gipper, man. And we got two DMV guys there. Come on now. Man, like the, the way it's set up now, like they've never played Carolina in the tournament. Carolina beat them in, in their last game. Yeah. I got to go with Duke. I got to go Point with Duke. justice, I, man. Poetic justice. So I got Duke I got versus, ah, uh, I want to say Villanova, man. It's hard to go against Jay Wright. And it's so fundamentally sound. They box out. They just do the thing. So I got Duke versus Villanova in the finals. The Duke by... Duke, Duke by eight, eight to twelve. I, I, I got, I got it. Mm, I'll go Duke, Duke by six, six to eight. If Villanova had Justin Moore, you know, I'm very unfortunate what happened to him. But if Justin Moore was playing, Villanova, I think would be in the, the driver's seat in this one. But without him, they're still going to be really, really good, tough to beat. But I, I'm, I'm with you. I, I've got yeah, it. Yeah, definitely prayers up for those guys, man. Prayers up for them. So as always, God first working too. We see you guys at the top, man. Thanks for listening. Up twenty, up twenty, run